eyes. So the street wants some clarity on that. But nonetheless, let's talk about a couple of companies then. Let's welcome Kapish Jain, who is the Chief Financial Officer at IIFL Finance to discuss their fourth quarter performance in detail. Hi, sir. Welcome to the show. Well, you know, first just wanted to start by talking about the disbursements which have taken place in some of your key segments such as MFI, loan against property, digital loans on an incremental basis as compared to Q3, as well as whether there's any kind of change in the incremental tenures in these segments. No, no. So there are no incremental change in tenure between what we did in quarter four to quarter three. Uh, the tenure is what they were in the past. So a, a, a microfinance loan largely runs for around two years. So there's no change in the tenure in which we are disbursing these loans in the okay. near term. Got Okay, got that. Uh, give us some more color then for this year, FY24. What kind of a loan growth are you looking at? Also a rough idea in terms of margins? Historically, if you see last five years, we have seen COVID, we've seen demon, we've seen liquidity crisis. All that has come in. We have grown at a, at a healthy CAGR of around 25%. In the core segment where we operate, which is the which is primarily those four five businesses of home loan, uh, microfinance, gold, lab, and, and the business loan. These are all retail businesses which forms around 95, 97% of our total book. That's the kind of growth we have, we have done and we have now also gone into an off-book model where we have an asset type strategy where we partner with the banks and sell some of these very pristine assets to these banks, which helps us in, in, in getting a good rollover of our book and with the same kind of equity base that we maintain, which helps us in growing even better and faster. But we are very cognizant of our trade cycles and our trade book as well, so therefore we will grow in a pragmatic manner in a very controlled manner to make sure that the asset book is always maintained pristine, which we have seen this time when we give the results out. With that kind of emphasis on the quality, we see that we should be able to grow at a similar kind of growth cycle. Um, so you can take around 20-25% growth that we saw in the past. We should be able to sustain that going forward as well. Mm. Okay. On, on the margins, you're, uh, you know, you were giving no, us so some on color. The margins, on the margins, if you have seen, uh, we, we, we have been able to maintain good healthy margins. Uh, what happens is as the interest rates move up, uh, if, the, if the asset, if you have the right cycle of the asset with regard to your customers and the niche segment where you're operating, you should be able to pass it on with them and get the growth, which we have done. We have been cognizant that our borrowing cost has also not gone up at the same pace because we maintain a very, um, a very dynamic treasury, a very, very uh, a pragmatic treasury on the ground as well. So the, so the treasury team has worked well to make sure the highest high borrowed borrowing money has been moved out. We've been able to go into a new horizon to borrow, be it from the mutual funds. We also got a rating upgrade this quarter from Moody's, which is also helping, uh, helping us in getting new footprints in the global markets. All this will make sure, and has made sure in the past as well, that the interest rates on the borrowing is not moving as, as the market has moved up. So as we maintain our borrowing costs as well at a more uh, lower level, we should be able to maintain our name to where it's been in the past. We are growing at some of the high yielding segments marginally better than some of, the, some of the other segments as well, which will also help us in getting the overall lead that we are looking for. So I don't see any okay. concern with the... All right, uh, Mr. Jain, you know, I just wanted to touch upon two segments, uh, your gold loan segment as well as your loan against property. I'm going to first ask you about the gold loan segment uh, because that has grown very robustly in terms of dispersals. You're up around 40.6% year on year, up 56% on a Q1Q basis. And this entire segment is very competitive. You have NBFC, smaller banks, which are competing for the same person who wants to lend against their gold. So can you give us a sense in terms of what has led to such a strong dispersal rate? What is the picture on the ground? You know, what is our go-to-market strategy? Go-to-market strategy is to operate in a space where the competition is lesser, which means you need to go into the hinterlands, you need to penetrate and move to a tier two, tier four city. One would argue that there's competition today, but there's competition around all the time. And uh, But then there's a huge amount of untapped segment. 65% of the business or the market is unorganized. Uh, as you go into the hinterland and penetrate downwards into tier three, tier four cities, you are just able to get to that pocket. And as you get to that pocket, the competition intensity is far lesser. Uh, you need to work hard there. We've added around 300 branches this fiscal. We added a similar number last fiscal as well. They've all been added in these markets. With the addition of those businesses in those markets, you get to a lower competition and then, then able to build your book at the deals and at the level that you wish to. So that, I think, has been our strategy. Our the key in gold business is absolutely building loyalty with the customer because he's giving his own personal asset. Uh, and giving his personal asset is something he would give only when he has full assurance and, and believe in the firm which he's giving to. 70% of my customers are customers who have come back. So I've got loyal customers who keep coming back to me to do business. And that's again been a factor where going into newer markets, retaining those customers and having a loyalty factor attached to them makes sure 
that I'm able to then grow uh, to the in the book and the business as well. Okay, you're facing a similar kind of competition when it comes to loan against property as well. Are there any chinks in the armor when it comes to loan against property and also your asset quality? Just tell us uh, there seems to be an improvement uh, on a year-on-year -year basis as well as sequentially within that segment. Yes. So on the on the lab business, the lab business is coming from again. As a, this is coming from primarily from a housing company. Our housing company have added close to around 160 branches in the in the last 12 months. This company also got 22 crore, 100 crores of primary equity infusion, which gives us a gunpowder from a growth perspective. The branch expansion gives you a gives you an opportunity from the presence that you're holding. And then as you go into into the into the penetrated market, the credit growth or, or the credit opportunity is humongous. Um, not more than 10% of the population gets to the credit that they are, what is available into the market. Uh, and therefore, you are able to taffer and grow yourself. Uh, we have an entirely inbuilt in-house underwriting and credit mechanism. All our resources who do any credit decisioning are largely internal, which helps us having a far better good check. The decisioning process is also very centralized. It is not branch driven. So our analytics engine, which is more digitally built on technology platforms, helps us in taking decisions. It is not people dependent. With that kind of element coming in play, we are able to then have a uniform kind of decisioning pan India for, for our disbursement that we are doing from a credit appraisal of the customer. And that helps us in getting a more sustainable, robust business to the portfolio. Opportunity is there in immense. You need to make sure that you have a good check on your credit. Asset quality, the question that you asked is primarily because uh, one is that the environment is looking better. The cycles are looking good. Uh, when you look into a lab or a housing, the affordability index, affordability index is, uh, one would argue, is all-time low. Like people's income levels have moved up far higher than, than what you see as the, as, the, as the cost of the asset. Yes, one would agree that their interest rates have moved up. So maybe the EMI share have a higher component of interest servicing, but the largest servicing comes from the cost of the asset that you're buying. If that is not moved up significantly, it really doesn't pinch as high as it, as it, as it can be. But as, as if, the, if the rates move up further going forward, yeah. you would need to be a little more cautious. Got it. Okay, all right, Kapesh. Thanks so much uh, for joining in and giving us those details. You're sounding fairly confident, but there are challenges, I think, uh, to, uh, you know, to growth for, uh, you know, the entire nation or the entire globe as well. So let's see how that goes out. But for the Indeed, time being, I, I you, like like yeah, you pretty much have your goal set. So the next time we chat with you, we'll see how you're going about achieving that. Have a, have a good day and looking forward to chatting up with you in the coming quarter. For the time being, though, slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Mr. Nath, who is the executive chairman and, and managing director at Ugro Capital to discuss how's business shaping up and what's the outlook for this year.